Hey guys, Ivan here, and in today's video we got a couple of very interesting bodybuilding updates and as you can see we are starting with an off-season update of Hassan Mustafa, actually sorry, he is one week out of Toronto Pro and this update is from last week, so let's say two weeks out and we can get a pretty good idea of what he's gonna look like on stage but before we watch the video, let's read what Hassan has to say here so he says, an update from last week just before we added some tweaks to ease into the peak week, so to ease into the peak week, he's not pushing for conditioning anymore, he's easing it down now. Then he says, things are looking amazing right now as I'm getting rid of water one day at a time. Anyone that knows me knows how much water my body holds, so it's always interesting to see how peak week shows off all the prep's hard work. I can't wait to share the stage with amazing athletes on Sunday, Doran is making uh, changes daily because the body is responding so well, I can't wait to step on stage at Toronto Pro. Alright, well let's check out the video, so yeah, big, as usual, that was never an issue, yeah, a little bit narrow in the shoulders, but overall very massive, especially the legs, I mean everything really, but the question is, as it always was with Hassan, is his conditioning gonna be good enough? And from what I'm seeing right here, is this something that a peak week can fix? Is this just water here in his glutes and his hamstrings? No, no, I'll just say it right away, it's not. It's not, he's not gonna look shredded on that stage, no matter what he does at this point, basically. So maybe the peak week is gonna change him a lot. But even if he comes in 20% sharper, it's still not gonna be enough, because there are zero lines in the glutes. There are wrinkles in his lower glutes. Hamstrings? Do you see a single detail on those hamstrings? Do you see any lines? Anything really? It's all just blurred completely. I mean, I don't know what kind of peak week protocol is he expecting, but in my opinion, no matter what he does, his conditioning is not gonna be good. This is not good for two weeks out. Sure, he's holding more in his back, actually in his lower body from behind in the glutes and hamstrings, from the front he's a little bit sharper, but still man, still, this is, I mean, this is kind of like John Jewett off-season conditioning, basically. Actually, let me take that back, John was more conditioned in the off-season than Hassan is right now. John had glute striations and hamstring striations even in the off-season. So based on what can Hassan beat John Jewett? And I don't think John Jewett is gonna win this show. I think Akim Williams is probably winning that show, and then for second it's gonna be a battle between John Jewett and Andrea Presti, and then we might see a comparison between Hassan and Quinto, Quinton Raya. So, yeah, I mean, Hassan, based on what I'm seeing right here, not nearly close to being in shape for a show. Not even close. I'm sorry I have to say it this way, but how else can I say it? I mean, I'm just being honest. What I'm seeing right here is not good. Not even close to good. Look at the legs right here. Are these legs close to being show ready? No, no, sure, upper body has a little bit more striation and, like, it's a bit harder, but, you know, it's not good for the stage. And if he dehydrates crazy in these last two weeks, maybe his upper body is gonna be decent, at least decent, but lower body, no, no. Those legs are gonna be washed up with zero detail, with fat in the gluten hamstrings, it's just a fact. This conditioning is more like 8 weeks out, 10 weeks out even, depending on how fast you lose your fat, but for Hassan, this is probably like, I don't know, 8 to 10 weeks, yeah, yeah, so this is not, not stage ready, not even close, it's not good for 2 weeks out, and he's being coached by Dorian Hamilton, I don't know what Dorian thinks about this, is it Dorian's fault, and all the other coaches who prep Hassan, aside from AJ Sims, I don't think it's their fault, I think it's Hassan's fault, I think he's not comfortable with pushing his conditioning to the limit, he was once with AJ Sims and he looked brutal, but he decided to stop working with him, probably because he didn't like what it took to get there, and now he's taking it easy and he hopes to win based on size, but I mean, no way he's gonna win Toronto Pro, and like all the shows now are stacked, because a lot of bodybuilders did not compete earlier in the year, so all the shows that are left until the Mr. Olympia to qualify for the Mr. Olympia are, are stacked, man. It's gonna be very difficult to win. If you wanna win, you need to be 100%. And Hassan looking like this, no way he's gonna qualify for the Mr. Olympia, if you ask me. No way, I don't see it. And pay attention to what he's writing here in the caption. 
like he is starting the peak week he can't wait to see the peak week results all the hard work is gonna show after the peak week he thinks some hail mary is gonna rescue him and get him in shape in one week it's not gonna happen dude it's not gonna happen you have a whole bunch of work left to do before you're ready for the stage and that's just a fact look at this guys i mean am i crazy are you seeing what i'm seeing this is not stage ready this is not good for two weeks out especially considering that he's going against this against akim williams who nailed it this year he has been very quiet and he usually is he just steps on the stage and he shocks everybody usually but even when he is off he is not as off as hassan and with all the muscle he has even if he is not 100%, if he shows up at like 80%, I still have him winning. But if he shows up like he showed up recently at the Arnold Ohio and Arnold UK, I mean, look at this, guys. Who out of those guys doing the Toronto Pro can challenge this? Andrea Presti? I don't think so. John Jewett? No, not yet. Hassan Mustafa? Hell no. Hell no. So this guy right here is the heavy favorite for Toronto Pro. And as far as Hassan Mustafa, I don't know, man. If he improves his conditioning, let's say, 30% by some magic in the last two weeks, maybe he can take out Quinton Raya, but do I see him beating Andrea Presti, John Jewett, and Akeem Williams? No, no, I do not. So, like, best case scenario, in my opinion, right now, fourth. And honestly, I'm so disappointed. I'm feeling like this is going to be the worst Hassan Mustafa, the worst conditioning of him that we ever saw on stage. We'll see, maybe I'm wrong, whatever you guys think, tell me down below, but honestly, I'm very, very disappointed in what I'm seeing. Alright, next up, we get a little physique update from Michal Grigio at two weeks out of Ampro Cup Spain. This is what good conditioning at two weeks out should look like. Is Hassan close to this? Hell no, hell no. Yeah, of course, it's different lighting and different pose and everything like that, but still, still you can see what dryness, what conditioning looks like at two weeks out and Grigio is bringing it and in my eyes he is the favorite still to win the Spain Pro yeah I know Beatrice Tabani is amazing and uh, uh, William Bonac is making a comeback and he is really great and Sasuke Rath is making a comeback sure even Nathan Diasha might jump in but I still have Grigio as my favorite because last year he officially established himself as seventh best bodybuilder in the world he was 7th in the world and he was in the second call out battling against Brandon Curry, Andrew Jack, Hunter Labrada. I mean, these guys are like the top Olympians. Brandon Curry actually won the Mr. Olympia and Arnold Classic twice. Andrew Jack is close, potentially will win the Mr. Olympia someday. Hunter Labrada, his best spot was 4th in one year. So, like, he was battling against those guys. That's how good Grigio is. Do not underestimate him. So, he's coming at this show. He won it last year. Granted, last year the competition wasn't that good, he had Andrea Presti, who, by the way, also looked amazing, was really conditioned, and, you know, he's an impressive bodybuilder. In my eyes, at this Toronto Pro, he's most likely gonna be in that top two, pushing Akeem Williams. I was saying that John Joy is gonna be top two, but now that I know Andrea Presti is doing it, I don't know. So, Krija beat him pretty easily, let's say, last year. And he's coming to win this show once again. Can any of the other guys stop him? I think the only guy that can stop him at this show is Grigio himself, if he messes up the conditioning or something like that. Because we saw this before, sometimes he comes in super dry, a bit too dry, and the other times he comes in a bit full, not super conditioned, and sometimes his posing is not perfect, so like, he's the only guy that can prevent himself from winning, but in my opinion, it is his show to lose. Whatever you guys think, tell me down below. Finally, we got a physique update from Urs Kalecinski, who is looking shredded, basically stage ready. But really, he is in the off-season. Now, compare this kind of off-season conditioning to Hassan Mustafa's two weeks out conditioning, right? Night and day, night and day. And once again, this is off-season. So why is he staying so lean? I mean, is he progressing? Yeah, I, that's a thing that I want to talk about. He's not making any progress looking like this year-round. He's obviously really, really dry. I wouldn't be too surprised if he did something, if he took something to dry out for this moment right here. He probably trained with Branch Warren, apparently, and he probably took these photos after the training with a pump. So, I mean, I don't know what he did for it, but again, he is really, really lean. 
And if he's looking like this year around, is he making progress? No, no, I don't think he is. I don't think it's possible. But the thing is, like, he's already maxed out. He can't really make much more progress. And if he blows up in the offseason, then he just have to suffer to suck down for classic physique and, you know, still look the same as every, every time because there is no more room to grow. Can he somehow work on muscle maturity, on adding details? I don't know if that's really a thing. Maybe it's gonna happen, like, with age, as his skin starts to get thinner. But really, I mean, as far as adding details, like improving arms and back and stuff like that, you know, I don't think that's gonna happen if he's staying 2% uh, body fat year around. Check out the glutes. Check out this conditioning. I mean, what the hell? What the hell? He, his glutes are ripped to shreds in the off season. Look at the lower back as well. Nothing, not even water. So he is dangerously dry, dangerously dry the entire year. And, you know, if he shows up looking the same, I don't see him beating Wesley Wissers, Nora Mundino, let alone Chris Bumstead. And even Brian Ainsley is questionable now since he lost to him at the Arnold UK. So, yeah, maybe, maybe switching to open at this point could make a lot of sense for us. Yeah, but I don't think he's gonna do it. He is a classic boy. He's gonna stay there for quite some time. We'll see what he can do for the Mr. Olympia, but, like, I don't see him progressing in placement. Not really. But maybe I'm wrong. Whatever you guys think, tell me down below. If you guys enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. And for more content like this, guys, subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for watching. See you soon. All the best. And bye-bye.